the Axiom project just went under a massive update and now it is better than ever. And for someone that resisted using it for years, I think I'm finally buying into the hype. If you're not familiar with Axiom, well, let me tell you a little bit about it. Axiom allows you to just create a bunch of different machines and then take a simple task, let's say a subdomain brute force, and then just distribute that through your 20, 30, 40, 50 machines that you have created. And recently they have added support for every platform that is out there. So whether you're a Linux user, Digital Ocean user, you use GCP, Azure, or even AWS, I think they have some sort of a setup wizard that just allows you to launch Axiom within that platform. If you don't have any money and you wanna try it out, don't worry, I will link you down below with $200 of Digital Ocean on me. If you do end up using it, it helps me also pay for some of my bills and it's just an affiliate link that I'm gonna link down below. But enough about that, let's talk about Axiom itself. And can I just jump into it and look at what it looks like? And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you my honest opinion on Axiom and what I think. Is it the ultimate recon framework or does it still need some work or there's room for improvement? And am I going to use it on the day-to-day -day basis? All right, so let's launch into Axiom and just typing AX, it's going to bring you into this help wizard thing that allows you to either launch into the machine. It's going to give you examples of how to use it. There's some images and things that I, there's so many menus here that I wish it was a little bit easier to navigate through, but I'm going to try and do my best to show you how to use all of these. The first thing you want to do is launch your fleet and the number of machines that you want to use. In this case, I've already done this. I'm going to make another one called YouTube One. Uh, this is going to be the prefix or the name for it. I'm just going to launch one more machine. It's going to take a couple of minutes but it's going to launch this machine with the number one instance using the image that i've already given it and the setup process earlier that i've done and then it's going to just put it in the region new york city 2 all of these typically gets done throughout the setup process of axiom and honestly it's going to depend based on the service provider that are using but in this case again i'm using the drill ocean it's going to take a couple of minutes to get this done and then hopefully it's going to come back and let us use these and i'm going to launch into my previous 15 that i've launched through my tests in the past couple of days so we're going to have a total of 16 machines to distribute the workload throughout this process and now that we're done setting it up you can see i have a bunch of them already selected it's only doing five of them in the past but what we can do is just do axiom fleet select i think is the outcome for it or axiom select maybe and we're just going to give it yt star meaning that i want to select everything that starts with yt including the yt1 which is 16 and then i have yt without the one right there and this is going to just select anything that has yt or just y in it and you can see now we have selected all of these different machines to use it and distribute all of our workload through. So now we have all this set up and we can also do a Axiom scan list to kind of see all the lists of different tools that are available throughout Axiom. There are a couple of things that I wanna show you how to do before we jump into scanning and that's just learning how to execute different commands on these machines. So for example, if I wanted to do something like I copy a file, maybe I wanna copy a resolver. I'm just gonna do an LS here, go back. Maybe right here, I have a resolver. I'm just gonna call this resolver, uh, resolver two. I wanna just copy this one. Let's just do it right actually, there we go. I wanted to just execute and uh, maybe CP this one or remove the current one. I can just do an Axiom exec, which is for executing. I can just type in something like ls home and it's just going to run the command ls on all the different machines. And then it's coming back and saying, hey, the folder op exists on all of these different ones. I can do it again and kind of snoop around and see what is on this op folder and kind of just look at the different commands that I want to run. I want to show you this just in case you wanted to maybe move things around, uh, do something on these machines all at once. You have that option. And if you wanted to copy a file, example, I want to put resolver.2 into this, uh, all these machines, actually, what I can do here is I can say, hey, I want you to just copy this resolver2 using the SCP module and put it inside of the home OP list. And as soon as we execute it, it is going to start the file transfer and it is looks like it is done. And we can confirm that by just doing another execute LS and we can just do list so like this and seeing if resolvers are there. So that one more time. And we can see now we have both resolver, which was the default that came with it, and also resolver two that we put in there. So this is kind of what you can do. Some of these different commands. There's a lot of use cases for these, but it is really important to know how to communicate and deal with your 16 or 20, 30 machines that you're going to launch before you jump into the scans. Now let's take a look at the scans and the list of programs that comes with Axiom. I didn't use any recon frameworks within Axiom. That's a complete defend video that we can make. Drop me a comment and say, make a part two if you want to see that. But these are just things that come by default 
throughout Axiom. And you can see there are a lot of different tools that you can use with this application. You can use DNS Gen, you have TLSX, you have FF, you have uh, Shuffle DNS, you have Nucle for screenshots, you name it, it's on here. And we're going to dig into most of those throughout this video. So let's take a look at a very basic scan. The way Axiom works is it takes your Axiom module, which is the scan module that we want to do, and it takes an input file. In this case, I want to use ips.txt, which is a list of IP addresses that I found that belong to PayPal. And then I'm going to call the module, which is the tool that we want to use, which in this case is TLSX. And I'm going to pass all the different arguments that I want to. So in this case, I'm saying, hey, use SAN and dash CN to get information. Do it silently without the banner. And then I want you to output all of these into uh, TLSX output.txt. And it's going to take that entire input. It's all the different IP addresses. And it's going to distribute all of them within 16 instances. And these are the ones that we have selected. Obviously, you don't have to do all of your six instances. You can do less. You can do more. It shows all the arguments that we've sent out. It has our module. And we can just wait it out and see it is quickly just each machine is just spitting out more and more information. And you can see that it's just giving us all of these different certificates that have came out based on these IP addresses. And if I go down all the way, you can see this is just really fast going through it. And it's just distributing the workload uh, throughout that machine. So what it's doing with this instances is taking the list of IP addresses, which is about 15 CIDR notations IPs, and it's distributing those into 15 machines. So if there is 15 ranges, each machine is getting one of those ranges and then and it's performing TLSX over it and grabbing the certificate data. Typically, if you were to do this within one machine, your tool is going to go through that one by one. But now instead, we've just distributed that over 16 machines and it's just spitting out all this information for us. Now that this is done, we can see it took about a minute and 43 seconds to do this entire thing, which I want to say this would have taken me a couple of hours to get through. And you can see there is 7,591 results. Obviously, a lot of these aren't going to be unique because uh, just the data that is coming based on what I see, it's not going to be unique. But we can just do now and look at our TLSX output. And now we can see that there's all these different assets that we can go after. We can obviously do something like a cut the and make the delimiter be a space and grab the second part of this and get all these different hosts. But I'm just going to skip this part because I want to do a massive list because if I do a count of this, we know there's 5,000 and some change, but if we do a sort and we just take a look at the unique results, there's only 327 uh, assets that is not big enough for what I want to accomplish. So I'm going to do actually something different for this module now that I want to show you is I've already done a sub finder result of Ford, for example, right here, and I have all these different domains. This is just an output from sub finder, just doing the dash all and giving it the dash D with Ford.com. It's just put out all these different domains. And I think there's a massive amounts of them. If we look, there is 48,000 and you can see they're all unique, but I want to distribute this workload between all 16 machines and run HTTPX on it. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do Axiom scan and we're going to use the module HTTPX. And in this module, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually give it my data sub finder. That's how it works. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it 50 threads and say, hey, I want you to grab the title and I want you to write all of this into the folder that I'm in currently and call it HTTPX output and get the results. This one may take a little bit longer because again, we are distributing 49,000 assets to probe and see if they're available, if we can interact with them and then also get the title for them. So it's going to take a couple of minutes and it's going to come back. But I want to say this will take maybe take 10 to 15 minutes when in reality, if I were to do this on a single machine, it would probably take hours or I would just do it overnight. So let's give it some time and see what we get out of this module. Okay, looks like this is done already. It took three minutes and 53 seconds to go through 48,000 targets and get some results for us. Now let's see what these results look like. I'm just gonna copy the file name right here and cancel this, do a cat, and there it is. We have most of the results right here. Some of them don't have a title apparently, but it looks like it's pretty clean data. It's pretty good for us to be able to just grab one of these URLs and put it into the browser and see what it looks like. And even if you wanna go even a step further, what you can do is, can actually use the Axiom scan, do a list. You can also use the module for screenshots. So they actually have a screenshot Nucle area right here that you can use to get your screenshots using Headless Browser. I'm gonna skip that one. It is kind of a cool thing to do, but I don't really look at screenshots anymore, but I just kinda wanna show you that they have these different modules that is created to accomplish a specific task that may be harder to do than just using the vanilla Nucle or just using HTTPX. That's just the 
basic usage of Axiom, but there's a couple of more cool things you can do. And I want to just show you how that looks like really quickly. Now let's take a look at a random domain. I'm going to kind of look at maybe uh, doing Ford. We're going to do Axiom scan again, but this time, instead of distributing a bunch of different assets to get scanned through different machines, we're going to focus on one asset and distribute a word list against that specific asset for getting a DNS brute forcing done. So this is what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to just say, hey, I want to use the input as my top 1M and I want you to use pure DNS single, which is one of the modules in there. I'm just going to give it forward and say, hey, I want you to put all of these into final DNS results and look for all the different DNS queries that you can with a brute force, which means it's going to take every single word out of this 1 million that I have, put it behind fort.com and see if there's a query or a valid DNS query. And if we launch this, again, it is 1 million different lines that it has to go through. But again, we're going to distribute all of that towards these 16 machines and see how long it takes. And you can see right off the bat, this is going very, very fast, faster than I expected it actually. And it looks like before I can even end the video to say we'll be right back, it is getting a bunch of results right here and it is just getting done. So let's see how long this takes. I'm going to say this will be probably done in the next couple of seconds, so maybe under a minute and see what it looks like. And as expected, you can see that right here, it took less than a minute, 40 seconds to brute force all these different targets. These are the targets are the words in my word list against a single target. And if we take a look at our maybe what was it called cat we do cat final dns we can see that there was a good number of results that came out of it and i want to even try a bigger one i also have another file right here that is the best dns word list i think there's something like nine million words in this this is the word list provided by asset node i'm going to do the same thing and say yep i want to do the same scan with axi i'm going to go up right here and instead of giving it the top 1 million, we're going to give it this file. I want to just kind of show you the power behind this tool and say, hey, I want you to do the same thing, but instead we're going to put it into results too. And we're going to launch this. This is 9 million. It took us about 43 seconds to do the last one. So if my math is right, somewhere between 6 to 8 minutes is when we're going to get 9,544,235 lines of DNS queries to get down. So let's see what this looks like really quickly and how long it will take. While we wait for this to get done, I want to make sure I explain something for you to understand. The first thing we did was we we're just taking a list of all the different assets and distributing it to different machines and saying, hey, perform a single task on all these different machines. What I'm doing here now is we're distributing a word list against a single machine through 16 machines. So we're saying, hey, take this massive word list, break it into chunks, and then distribute those chunks into different machines and do a DNS brute force and see which ones are valid queries, dump them into a file, and then push it to the command center that we're using to run AX from. So I wanna kind of make sure that I talk about those two. Those are two different things that you're doing. You're still scaling your work, but you're doing a different movement, which is lateral versus a vertical movement when it comes down to scaling your task. Okay, so it looks like we just finished a 9 million plus list of targets against a single domain, and it only took it about six minutes, which is incredibly fast. Again, if I were to do this on one single machine, it would probably take me forever, but let's take a look at the results for us. It looked like last time we got 177, but now we have gotten over 900 results. So if I cat this right here, we have gotten a ton of results in this one. And honestly, this is a really good case for times where you want to do brute forcing, you want to distribute your workload. So I think this is the way that I would use Axiom is just distributing massive word lists against a single target. So now let's take a look at how can we just use a Nucle template that is locally in our machine. And the way it works with uh, Axiom is you can still give it the input, which is the file that we want to scan. But what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, I want to do a Nuclei scan using Silent. But instead of giving it a template on those machines, I'm using a local folder. That means this template right here exists on my machine. I'm giving it a folder, which is called template actually, on my local machine. And then I'm going to ask it to write all of the outputs of that into nuclei test.txt. And we're going to run this again and see how fast we get the results. Remember, this is a massive list that I have. It looks like there is a ton of domains here. There's 6,000 domains in here. That's a different file that I'm using from a scan that I did. But it's just going to go through all of these and launch a single template scan, which is for Swagger, and give us the results. The key important thing here to talk about is it allows you to call a dash dash local folder argument 
that uses your local machine. So this is the, the VPS that I'm using to control all my other 16 machines through Axiom. And it's just giving it the folder. It could be a single template. It could be a bunch of them in there. And then it's just going to scan those and put the results into nuclei test. And it looks like it's already starting to find some stuff. Uh, I just started it. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. I'm going to give this one maybe four minutes and see what we find. This specific functionality that allows me to use a template locally on my machine instead of pushing it to 16 machines is one of the reasons why I've been enjoying Axiom a lot. With Lima, unfortunately, I love using Lima a lot of times. It didn't let me push any of these local nuclear templates into those machines. So every time I wanted to use a new template, I had to rebuild the entire Lima build and then do it all over again, which was really annoying. But in this case, this just simply allows me to use my local machine, write the template that I want, and then distribute it throughout those 16 machines. So that's one of the things that I love about Axiom in comparison to Lima. A lot of you guys know I love Lima and I use it a lot in the past videos. But just using Axiom in this way has been a lot easier, which has made it a lot of more fun for somebody like me that does a lot of scans for just my clients or even just for bug bunnies that I do. And it looks like this was also done. And this one actually took four minutes, less than four minutes. And if we look at our results for nuclei test, I'm gonna cancel this. If we do this, we can see that it's actually got a ton of results. I can just actually do a sort you just to see what I, of them is unique. And then we can see 213 instances of our swagger. And looking at this template itself, I want to show you that it wasn't a massive template. It was just making three different requests or four different requests and looking if swagger UI was available and the title of those. So this is pretty much a simple and easy demo of how you can use Axiom Obviously, there's a lot of use cases. You can just kind of tailor your usage of Axiom to the way that you want. But it's kind of why I wanted to kind of go through it and also talk about whether or not I think Axiom is the ultimate recon framework. To answer that, we got to think about a couple of different aspects of this tool. A lot of you guys know, again, I talked about Lima a bunch. I love using Lima because it was really, really powerful and you can just scale it as to many machines as you want. I was going up to 250 machines at some point using lambdas, but with that, it came a massive cost. I think at some point in a month, I racked up about $500 because I was just doing massive scans that were taking maybe 12 hours sometimes. And it was worth it. I found some stuff. It was good use case, but it is very, very expensive to use a lambda. On the other hand, if you're using Axiom with General Ocean, you're getting capped out at $5 per machine and you're not paying per usage. You are paying that $5 a month. You're just going to pay for the number of instances. And if you think about it, I'm doing all of these 9 million, you know, subdomain brute forcing that I was doing. 9 million is a lot of requests and we accomplished it in a few minutes only with 16 machines. So I don't have to scale to 200 different workers. I could do that with 16 machines because of how powerful and fast it is. But regardless of scaling it, I love that Axiom allows me to kind of manage how much money I spent. So it is really easy to deploy it, but it's also very, very easy to manage your budget. So if you're balling on a budget or hacking on a budget, this is the way to go. The one thing that I did like about Lima a lot, the fact that it was simple, you only had one menu, you had a number of tools that you could use and installing different tools on there was a lot easier than Axiom. You didn't have to write anything. You just push the executable in a folder and there you had it and you could use that tool on Lima. With Axiom, there is a lot of different menus because it has a lot of different functionalities. I just hope they find a way to clean this up, but also maybe make a better way to ingest or create documentation for all the different functionalities for people to go use and learn. This is not to say it's not a good tool. It just makes it really hard to use sometimes because there's so many options and then everything is right there in your face. I like to be a minimalist and keep things to a minimum, but with Lima, it was easy. With Axiom, it wasn't. To answer the question of whether or not I will use Axiom, the answer to that is absolutely yes, because it is saving me a lot of money, but also it's just easier to deploy and it's open sourced and it's an open project that people could use moving forward. All right, that's it. Drop me a comment. Tell me part two if you want me to continue making more on Axiom and maybe doing some workflows with it. Drop me a comment. Otherwise, thank you for watching. We are at 144,000 subscribers. So I want to say thank you all. Thank you for getting the channel all the way to 144,000. I cannot wait to celebrate 200K with you in the future. With that said, if you haven't already, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Do all the liking. Do all the commenting. And I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.